morning. morning. Welcome to worship this very smoky morning outside. They're saying not to spend much time outside today, so be careful with that. Are there any announcements anyone needs to make? Okay, I wanted to let you know that Del Matheson, Barb Matheson's uncle, has passed away. So please keep the entire family in your prayers at this time. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you are able, please rise. Hear God's love. We hear God's love by proclaiming Jesus' victory over sin and death for the world and for us through the sacraments, scripture, preaching, liturgy, and song. Hear God's love. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, Jesus, the, bre- the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven, and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering hymn today is verses 1 and 2 of Beautiful Savior, number 838. If you plan to sing, masks are required, so please put them on.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The elder Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. The second reading I'm going to take my mask off. Too hot. <laughs> A reading from Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When, he, when it says he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every lig ligament with which it is equipped, as each part 
is working properly promotes the body's growth in building up itself into love. The word of the Lord. As you are able, please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I love bread. My mother used to make homemade bread all the time when I was growing up, no question. My preference to make, actually, is probably banana bread. I love it. But I tell you, I don't think I can have breakfast without having a slice of raisin bread. It's just the way I am. I can't do without bread. I don't know about you, but I need it. Even those of you who need to be gluten-free, now there are plenty of different ways of eating bread that is gluten-free. As you bake bread, you have to give a time of rest while it rises. And you also have this incredible touch as you knead it and shape it. And then your senses come alive as you smell it while it's in the oven baking. Oh, I remember those days when I was growing up. <laughs> the people in today's readings are looking for bread, hoping for a steady supply of bread so that they won't ever have to worry about looking and working to get bread for themselves. You remember last week's readings? Jesus tells his disciples to feed the whole crowd. There's over 5,000 people there. And they do, with five loaves of bread and two fish. Last week's reading was our first of four weeks dealing with bread. So you're going to have two more weeks of me talking about bread. <laughs> But it's not just ordinary bread in Jesus' 
life and our lives. It is the bread of life, the bread that gives life to the world, the bread of Jesus. Does this make you think of something in particular? Most of us, when we hear about the bread of life, we think of the bread of the church, Holy Communion. We are more informed than all the people who were following Jesus in his days. For we have more of the story now. They didn't see the bread of life that Jesus is. They could only see ordinary bread. So when Jesus told them about the bread of life, the bread that endures, they asked, What is this? They had no clue. And if we look at the first reading, it's no different with the people with Moses in the wilderness. The people in the wilderness were starving, and God heard them and sent them manna. Do you know what the word manna actually means? It means, what is this? Literally, that is the translation of manna. Jesus reminds the crowds that it wasn't Moses who brought the manna down from heaven. It was God. And the crowds just don't get it. When Jesus says he is now the one sent from God who is the eternal bread himself, Jesus says that all who believe in him will never be thirsty, and whoever comes to him will never be hungry. Jesus is the bread of life which comes down from heaven to fill us forever. Jesus speaks to himself, of himself, in the Holy Communion here. So let's go back to our Holy Communion. It's surprisingly common for us believers to somehow think that in order to receive communion, we have to be worthy enough. We have to know enough in order to believe. But Jesus tells us it is not our work, it is the work of God for us. Trust in Jesus and his words is all that is needed. Jesus tells us that. So, how do we get this faith, this trust? In our baptism, God gives it to us. This is why baptism comes before communion. The faith to receive the benefits of the body and blood of Christ comes after the bath that cleanses us from sin. Baptism makes us alive in Christ and members of God's family, sharing in this holy meal. The reason that we, as Lutherans, baptize babies is clearly to show that the forgiveness is God's work, not ours. We do not wait for people to come to Christ or to decide for Jesus, or to be old enough even to understand what's going on. Instead, we take a baby and we baptize, showing that God brings us into the kingdom of heaven, into God's forever family, even when we can't begin to understand it. And you know, even as adults, do we really understand what God is giving us in this gift? Holy communion itself is a mystery. We can't understand it either, can we? 
How can this possibly be the body and blood of Christ? Is it manna or what is that? It is something we receive only in faith and trust in God and in his word, which is all gift. It is a gift from God to each one of us. Even our faith is a gift from God. This bread and wine up here doesn't just represent Jesus. It really is Jesus. We as Lutherans understand that. Jesus said, this is my body. This is my blood. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And today we come to him here at the table and are never hungry or thirsty again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Here is the Bread, number 483. Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests. Defend species at risk of extinction. And strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Grant comfort and healing to those affected by all disasters, especially wildfires, tornadoes, so that they may come to know new life through you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Lord, in your mercy, you draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry, reassure those who are despairing, and accompany those who are imprisoned. We pray especially for those we name you before you now in our hearts or spoken out loud. <clears throat> Drain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Lord, in your mercy. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make your people worshiping as Emmanuel Lutheran a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt ex excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. You provide food that endures for et eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered, especially with Del Matheson, feasting together with all your saints in your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abundant grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. You may greet each other with a sign of Christ's peace through bowing towards each other. You may be seated. Is there someone who's going to be able to bring forward the offering? give God our thanks and praise through our tithes and offerings of thanksgiving for the mission of the church, including the care of those in need. For those worshiping inside the sanctuary, we receive your offerings in the plates.
For those who are worshiping online, you are invited to mail your checks to Emmanuel, sign up for automatic withdrawal, or give online. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to your It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We will speak the hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal, as grain scattered on the hillside become one bread. So let your church be gathered from the ends of all the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, eat Christ's love. As we celebrate Christ's communion today, Christ's banquet, a gift of Christ's presence, a gift of forgiveness, a gift of life for you. You receive the pre-packed sealed grape juice with a sealed wafer on top as you enter the sanctuary. As I say, the body of Christ given for you, open the top part and eat the wafer. The body of Christ given for you. As I say, the blood of Christ shed for you, you can open the grape juice and drink. The blood of Christ given for you.
You may bless the non-communing members of your family with the words, you are a beloved child of God. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this bread, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is verses 3 and 4 of Beautiful Savior, number 838. Please put your masks on to sing. Thank you. 